Okay, geeks, I know this is a tiresome subject, but we have to talk about it. We all know the gold standard for setting passwords. At least one number, at least one special character, nothing too obvious, and change it every now and again. I myself don't follow these rules. I've used the same password for Facebook, Reddit, and Twitter. My favorite hobby and the year of my first LAN party. Sure, as nice as Feeding Pigeons 1998 might sound, it's not the greatest password. But even more important than a secure password is the right way to handle it. Do me a favor and pay attention. We'll show you the seven biggest mistakes when handling passwords. Here we go. Passwords are a necessary evil. They are the most commonly used way to authenticate users. The best password strategy is often a good selection of password and a good handling of the password. But this is often forgotten. Even the best password is of no use if you can't remember it or write it down somewhere. There are many common mistakes that can be made in handling of passwords, which is exactly why we've decided to put together a list of don'ts. These are the things that have to be avoided when you're dealing with passwords. Some people believe that it is safe to store passwords and information like bank and credit card details in their contact lists. While this might be tenable, the important thing to remember is to secure the smartphone. More on that in rule number seven. And whatever you do, if one of your friends asks you to send them Brian's contact details, don't send them the bank contact detail. No company will ask you to provide your password telephonically. They usually have other ways of making sure that you are you. Probing questions about your date of birth, security questions you provided at sign up, just not your password, ever. Chances are, if you're giving your password out on the telephone, you're about to become victim of identity fraud, or worse. This one is a little more difficult because it is a nightmare to remember which password you've used where. But it's important because if one service gets hacked, some dark and shadowy figures now know exactly which email and password combination to try for other commonly used services. Or in a nearby plant or under the telephone. Chances are, if you think of some way to hide your password, someone else is going to think of that exact place to check for it. So while it is mostly okay to write down your password, it is important that you keep it safe, preferably behind lock and key. Sure, they seem really nice. And Jim from accounting is a friendly guy. He says he can help you with your Facebook privacy settings. But you should probably not trust Jim. Not just because he's an accountant, but you don't know what Jim's going to do with your Facebook account. And if you don't follow rule number three, you've just given Jim the ability to slide into your DMs. Some new technologies are not just marketing hype. Some bring a new level of protection to your devices, data, and privacy. Some of the best security mechanisms have been introduced in the past few years. Two-step verification, face recognition, and touch ID. Of course, I'm not saying to jump on every bandwagon, but when new technology is released by reputable players, have a look at what it's about. Don't be afraid to adopt it. They're only getting better at protecting your security. These days, our devices are our gateway to the digital world, with browsers remembering our passwords, apps keeping us signed into services, and more. Social media accounts, money transfer apps, it's all there, ripe for the taking to anyone who can access your device. So keep these things secured. Make sure your device is protected. And also, make sure it locks after a short enough time period. Here's another lesson you should learn. Treat your password like your toothbrush. Use it regularly, change it often, and don't share it with anyone. Or do you not believe in good dental hygiene? OMG. But at least you could click subscribe. It's right here. What are you waiting for?